in search of, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of, In Search Of. Brought to you by, the Black Ancestry Network Group Family Site, which is located at, myheritage.com, and there is also a social media account for this site, located on Facebook. The synonym for this site is, The Bang. The president and creator of these sites, Mr. Thomas Smith, has created the In Search Of series, in order to share information concerning individual ancestors located within the Bang network of genealogical trees, created by its users. In an effort to share, disclose, and hopefully revive the investigations of these ancestors with new information that may be revealed by listeners like you, who may hold key information concerning the search for these individual ancestors. This episode is about a black man, who could pass, for being white. He is suspected of being born in the mid-1860s, or, in the early 1870s. But he himself is not recorded on any city, state, or federal records until 1880, but then, he vanishes from the records again from 1880 to the year 1900. Leaving this investigation with approximately 30 to 35 years of his life, as a total mystery. The man that we are researching realized this himself, and decided to travel, in order to find his very own origins, and beginnings. The Black Ancestry Network Group would like to invite you to come on that very same journey, as we trek through genealogical records, and oral history, in search of The Mysterious John W. Ragland John Warren Ragland was born in 1864, but could have been born, in 1870, or 71, but, from what state? This is the question at hand. It was either, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, or Virginia. The reason why this question needs to be answered is quite simple. There are almost no records, of John Warren Ragland, between 1885, and 1895, but I believe I have the reason for this. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the census of 1880. The 1880 census has one, John W. Ragland, he is 20 years old, and the record indicates that he was born in Kentucky. His home in 1880, is in Rock Creek County, Kansas, and when you look at his race, it says that he is a white man. Based on the records that I am about to show you, it is elementary to believe that John W. Ragland, could pass for being white. This record also says that he is single and that his occupation is that of a laborer. This is the best solid evidence that shows that John W. Ragland was living in Rock Creek County, Kansas in 1880. This record was taken almost 20 years before John actually got married. His would-be wife, Rosetta Tennessee Harding, would not be born for another two years. John W. Raglan was 20 years old at the time of that this census was taken. That is if we are to believe that John was born in 1864, but if he was born in 1870, or 71, he would have been around 9 or 10 years old. After all, it was not uncommon for a young man at the age of 10 to be working in order to help support his family, and in this case, he could have been supporting himself. Thousands of family history researchers, cursed the loss of almost the entire 1890 U.S. Census. After learning of its destruction due to fire nearly a century ago, genealogists quickly begin to skip that year in their record searches, turning instead to city directories, tax records, and other substitutes that might name an ancestor during those key years between 1880, and 1900. For this reason, when I research the area of Kansas, for John W. Ragland, I don't look forward to seeing an 1890 census connected to the John W. Ragland that we are researching. There are 71 records related to the name, John W. Ragland in the area of Rock Creek, and most of them are marriage records. Tax records, or city directories that can't be attributed to a young man of 9 or 10 years old. But for the year 1890, I can find records related to several, John Raglands, but none of them, have the middle initial of W. Which leads me to believe that John Warren Ragland was no longer living in Rock Creek, Kansas in 1890. There are 862 records of several, John W. Raglands in the United States, eight of those records came out of the state of Kentucky. One out of the eight records is a John W. Ragland. But this particular record indicates that this John Ragland was born in Tennessee. With respect to the records of Kentucky, none of the records indicate that we are on the trail of the John Warren Ragland that we are researching. So what do we have? Concerning this man's origins? 
As of today, the 1900 census indicates that he was born in December of 1871, and, was born in Pennsylvania. The 1910 census indicates that he was born in 1870, and was born in Pennsylvania. But the 1920 census indicates that he was born in 1866, and was born in Virginia. So now the question becomes, why is it that the 1900, and the 1910 censuses, show John was born in 1870, and again in 1871, and both of these censuses have his place of birth recorded in Pennsylvania? And why does his 1920 census, record him being born in 1866? That's a four and five year difference depending on what census year we are using. What is also notable concerning his race, is the fact that both the 1900, and the 1910 census, records him as being black, but the 1920 census records him as being white. Therefore, it is easy to surmise that John Warren Ragland was a Negro, who could pass as being white. My talk babe. Lillian Irene Campbell, born Hayes, was born on the 17th of April, in the year 1929. She died on the 25th of October, 2021. Her mother was Octavia A. Ragland, and she is the third daughter born to John Warren Ragland, and Rosetta Tennessee Ragland. Lillian, aka, Babe. Lillian's mother Octavia is believed to have divorced her husband sometime after 1930, and she died between 1930 and 1940. Her father, Duriel Hayes, remarried in 1942. Octavia's sister, Rosetta Tennessee Ragland, adopted Lillian between 1930 and 1940, and Lillian was raised in the Ragland household. The youngest in this home was, Thomas Harrison Ragland aka Ted, and he was born in 1921. Ted, was eight years older than Lillian, aka, Babe, in the fall of 2020, I made contact with Babe, and what she said concerning John W. Ragland, took this research in a whole new direction. Without going through all the details of the talks with Babe, I will share with you, the information that changed the scope of this investigation, as to the mystery that is, John Warren Ragland. Keep in mind, that everything that Lillian said, was what she had overheard growing up. You see, she never met, John Ragland. As a matter of fact, Babe was born, the same year that John Ragland died. She said, that she heard conversations about John Ragland, and that these conversations, stayed with her, all of her life. The first thing that she said that she heard was, that John, was a lookout, for one of the famous gangs that went around robbing trains, and that these outlaws were once lawmen. She said that John would guard their tunnel, and that this tunnel was under a church or building of some kind. She also told me that John actually worked with these men when they were lawmen, before they became outlaws. The second thing she said was, how John Warren Ragland met his wife, Rosetta. Lillian told me that, that Rosetta was about 16 years old when she first saw John. You see, one of Rosetta's chores, was to milk the cows before going off to school. This would have been around the year 1898. John would have been around 34 years of age, that is, if he was born in 1864, but if John was born in 1870, or 71, he would have been around 27 or 28 years old. Babe went on to say that, whenever Rosetta would go out to milk the cows, she would see John, sitting on the fence at some distance from the farmhouse, he would just be sitting there, watching Rosetta as she milked the cows. After a few months of this, Rosetta decided to go have a chat with him. Like clockwork the very next day, Rosetta saw John in the distance, sitting on the fence just watching her, so she did what she said she would, and went over and talked to him. From that day on, they began to get to know one another. When Rosetta turned 17, in the spring of 1899, John and Rosetta got married, and on February the 26th of 1900, they had their first child, a girl that they named, Lucretia Viola Ragland. This was the first recorded sighting of John Warren Ragland since the 1880 census, some 19 years. Where was he during these 19 years, what was he doing? Why is he not recorded on any records at this time? He vanished through all of his teen years, and most of his 20s, until the moment he saw his future wife, milking a cow on the Ragland farm. Not everything about John W. Ragland, is recorded on documents. The question still remains. Where did John W. Ragland come from? 
and what can we find out about him concerning his past? Specifically, we would like to know where he was between 1885 and 1895, just three years before he discovered Rosetta, milking them cows. Researching the Dalton Gang Immediately after talking to Babe, I got on the computer and typed in the search engine, Outlaws, Late 1800s, Train Robbery, and Tunnel. Right away, the Dalton Gang came up. At that point, the only thing that I knew about them, is what I had seen in documentaries, or in the movies. Lillian's mind, was very sharp for being 91 years old. She was so convincing that I had to take what she told me, as nothing but the unadulterated truth, regardless of the fact that she couldn't remember the name of the outlaw gang that she was referring to. Nonetheless, a few days after making the discovery of the Dalton gang, I called Lillian again, to confirm this gang, and that is exactly what she did. I will share with you just a little, about what I discovered. Keep in mind, that concerning this gang, and its members, all I want to do is to verify their locations, between the years 1885, and 1895. The time period in which John Warren Raglan's history, becomes vague. We want to see if there is any correlation between the areas where the Dalton gang lived or hung around, and any John Warren Ragland records that can be discovered in these areas. If you would like to know more about the Dalton gang. To be honest, it would be better to do your own research on the Dalton gang. Even if your research comes in the form of videos. There are many such videos that you can watch on YouTube. I say all of this because I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail concerning these lawmen who turned into train robbers. I just want to know if there is any validity to what Babe told me concerning John Warren Ragland. Okay, here we go. The players in the Dalton gang are as follows. Frank, Gra, Robert who is also called Bob, and then there is Emmett Dalton. Now, the short story goes like this. Frank Dalton, was the eldest of the Dalton brothers. In 1887 he was a deputy U.S. Marshal under Judge Isaac Parker, the hanging judge of Fort Smith, Arkansas. This is the same judge that appointed Base Reeves, the infamous Lone Ranger, who made over 3,000 arrests of dangerous fugitives. If John W. Raglan was in or around this area, he would have been between 16 and 23 years old. Personally, I believe that John W. Raglan was born in 1864, that he was 34 years old when he married Rosetta, and if he did work for Frank Dalton, and if he was in the area of Fort Smith, he would have been around 23 years old. On November 27, 1887, Frank and another deputy marshal, Jim Cole, went across the river from their base at Fort Smith to arrest three whiskey bootleggers. As they approached the camp, the bootleggers began to shoot at them. After Dalton shot and killed two, his gun jammed, and he was killed by the remaining bootlegger. His deputy abandoned him after being shot. Frank Dalton is buried in Coffeyville, Kansas. Now, after Frank's death, brothers Gra and Bob took over his job as deputy U.S. Marshal at Fort Smith, Arkansas. Bob soon hired Emmett under him to guard prisoners. After Bob killed a man in the line of duty, which he claimed was in self-defense, he began to drink heavily and become restless. He was assigned to organize a police force in the Osage Nation, Indian Territory, and he took Emmett with him, as a deputy. Gra stayed at Fort Smith. Emmett and Bob, kept good reputations in the Osage Nation until July 1890, when they began stealing horses. Eventually, stockmen organized to capture them, forcing the Daltons to flee, hiding out in the bluffs on the Canadian River, about 70 miles southwest of Kingfisher, Oklahoma, they sent to Gra, for help. Gra tried to get them food, horses, and ammunition but was caught and jailed at Fort Smith, where he had formerly worked. After two weeks Gra was released, as Lawman hoped he would lead them to his brothers. Bob and Emmett took a train to California, and stayed with their brother William, also Bill Dalton at his ranch near San Miguel, San Luis Obispo County, California. Well, I researched every place that the Daltons visited, lived at, or near, and the places they moved to, and found nothing. It has now been over ten years, and John Warren Ragland, is just as big of a mystery today, as he was ten years ago. I researched California, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky. Out of all these states, 
I could find only one John Ragland without the middle initial W, he could be, the very John Ragland that I am looking for. But I still need to research in the state of Missouri, we will go over that a little bit later, for now, let me tell you about my third conversation with Cousin Lillian. My third talk with Cousin Lillian. On this phone call, I wasn't sure what state John Warren Ragland actually came from. I told her that I had three documents that, that gives me three birth locations for him, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and Virginia. Right away she said, those are the states that John went to visit somewhere in the 1910s or a few years later. She told me that John was searching for his family, and that he didn't remember where they originated from. So he packed up the family, and went on a trip to these three states in search of them. So I reviewed the records, and I discovered that in the 1880 census, John is on the record, that he was born in Kentucky, and jumping over to the 1890s where there is nothing on record for John. I go to the 1900 census, where he is on record, that he was born in Pennsylvania, and in the 1910 census, he again records that he was born in Pennsylvania. It's not until we get to the 1920 census, after he took his family on a trip, that we find him now, creating a record, indicating that he was born in Virginia. So, what did he find out that, we don't know? I surmise that John, and his family began the trip in Pennsylvania, and from there, went to Kentucky. I believe that if he had found what he was looking for in Pennsylvania, he would not have gone to Kentucky, and likewise, if had not found what he was looking for in Kentucky, he would not have gone to Virginia. I believe that John found his family in the state of Virginia on this trip of discovery. And that is the reason why Virginia became relevant to him after 30 years of believing he was born in either Pennsylvania, or Kentucky. What cannot be misunderstood, is that John, according to Babe, went on a voyage of discovery after 1910, on that voyage, he visited three states, and in 1920, he named one of the three states, as his place of birth, and that state, just so happens to be a state, that he had never claimed, in the last 30 years of his life. There is one more piece of information that allows me to believe that these events are true. Thomas Harrison Ragland, the youngest of the children of John and Rosetta Ragland, told his grandson, Thomas L. Smith, I meet my grandfather, and he was a white man, and quote. Now, Thomas Harrison Ragland, a.k.a. Ted, was born in 1921, and his father John, died in 1929. What that means is that, Ted, knew his father between 1921, and at least, January 1929. The 1920 census is the clue that I needed. Knowing that John went to all three of these states that I was confused about, with regard to his origins. Now, I have placed my focus on the state of Virginia. But before I can explore this state, I need to look further into the whereabouts of all of the Dalton gang members, and the locations of each of these Dalton brothers between 1885 and 1895. This gives me a three-year window to the time when John met Rosetta Tennessee Harding, milking the cows in 1898, and the 1880 census that puts him in Rock Creek County, Kansas. My hope is that I will discover his whereabouts when John was somewhere between 9 and 25 years old. I have no doubt that the answer to this question, will open the floodgates with regard to the mystery man, John Warren Ragland. Part 2 of, In Search of, John Warren Ragland. Can't be estimated at this time. However, what I can tell you, is that as soon as new information is discovered, that will revive this investigation. The members of the Black Ancestry Network Group, will be the first, to know about it. Thank you for listening to, In Search of, John Warren Ragland. This audio series was brought to you by, The Bang. I hope to see you in our next installment of this series. Where we go in search of, the grandfather of, Reuben Crawford Hayes. His name is, Frank Hayes. He was born in 1831, and is believed to be a freedman, of the five civilized tribes. I can't wait to tell you more about him. Until we met again, bang.